Day. And I'm Richard Day. We're both chiropractors. We've been in practice together for 11 years. Married for 10. With three beautiful little girls. We know it's possible to have an exceptional practice that's built around your life. Because we've done it. So we've created this podcast. The Lifestyle Practice Builders Podcast. We'll interview chiropractors, answer questions, and bring you resources to help build and grow your practice. So let's get this party started. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Lifestyle Practice Builders Podcast. I'm your guest, Dr. Haley Day. I recorded this episode with chiropractor Kate Antonetti way back in December, and re-listening to it over the last week has inspired me like it did talking to her back then. Kate and her husband own Antonetti Chiropractic in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and they have two beautiful children, Leo and Rose. Today, Kate shares with us how her personal experience led her to creating her own community, which has become a resource for patient education and community building in ways she could have never imagined. With the unique way she builds and markets her practice, she's got so many tokens of wisdom for new chiropractors, chiropractors stuck in practice, and chiropractors working with or planning to work with spouses. So thank you for hanging with us and giving it a listen. Kate, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm going to start by asking you about why you became a chiropractor. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I originally became a chiropractor because I was just so interested in the human body. I was a athlete my whole life. I played um, Division One college soccer, and I had my fair share of injuries, like torn ACL, all of that. And I always experienced such great, not only relief, but hope from chiropractic. Um, I, whether I was an injured athlete or, um, having any kind of chronic issue with my health, I would always turn to chiropractic and it always got me back on track and allowed me to be at my optimal level. So even though I wasn't, um, if you would have checked in with me halfway through my college career, I absolutely thought I was going to be playing professional soccer at one point, which is hilarious. Um, but towards the end, I realized that I really wanted to pursue chiropractic. And so once I graduated with my degree in exercise science, I was off to chiropractic school. Awesome. So where did you graduate from? Miami of Ohio. And I went to um, Logan in St. Louis. Okay. And how long have you been practicing? Um, It has been almost 10 years. Okay. That's about, yeah. we, we've been a little over 10 years. So can you tell us a little bit about your path after graduation? Like what were your plans during school and how did they change if they changed at all? And how yeah. did you get into practice? Well, um, when I was in school, I don't think I ever really had a clear idea of where I wanted to be. I'm just a natural dreamer and I would look at the math on, um, my family's international. So I always thought I'd be like, traveling. Um, but as graduation came closer and, um, at the same time, I was also, um, dating my husband, then we became, then we got engaged and then obviously we're married now. And so we started to get much more realistic and, um, we are both my parents and his parents were living in the Midwest. And so we set our sights on the Midwest. At the time, we were both pretty excited about Indianapolis. Um, so that's where we headed to. I was an independent chiropractor or independent contractor in a family practice in Indianapolis for two years, um, right after graduation. And my husband followed me, but uh, was in a separate practice as an independent contractor there. And we just learned the ropes. Like we just dove in and figured it out as we were going. And, um, then we don't live in Indianapolis anymore. We, um, and this is kind of a longer story, which we, I'm sure we will get into, but we are now in Kalamazoo, Michigan, um, and practice together. Okay. And so our audience will be really upset if I don't ask you how practicing together has gone. (laughs) Did you guys have, are you, do you practice similar? Do you, are you different? Do you take on different roles in the practice? How does it look for you guys? Yeah. Um, so it's, 
That's such an interesting question when you are a chiropractor, because as chiropractors, we know how different we can all be, but from a patient um, perspective, a lay person's perspective, like we may feel different, but we're actually very, very similar. So um, that's how I feel my husband and I are. And we also have an associate, Dr. Luke Conroy in our practice. We are all, um, we all practice diversified. We all practice like motion palpation and um, we have a background in DNS and, um, so we, each of our patients for sure gets a different experience because of the chiropractor they're with. Um, however, we do practice very similar. So yeah, it's, and it's now that I have stepped away, I'm part-time because I'm a mom too. I realize just from feedback from our community that we, they get a very similar experience, whoever they see in our office. Okay. That's nice. You have, you can kind of fill in for each other. Do patients see other, do they see all three of you or do you mainly stick with your own? Oh yeah. You know, I should definitely, I should not breeze over this. Um, so because (laughs) part of what happened when I, when we had children, when um, my son is three and a half, he's our oldest is I, I really zoomed in and narrowed in on my focus, which is women's health, specifically prenatal and postpartum. So my personal practice within our family practice is I only see, for sure, I only see women. I haven't adjusted a man in years. Um, And I, so of those women, I really specifically focus on um, pregnant patients. I'm Webster certified. I've done ICPA trainings. And then I walk with them through their pregnancy to do postpartum. And I know we'll get to it, but then creating Mama Core has, has helped to just like su- further support okay. the moms in our community through their pregnancy. So our patients get very similar types of adjustments and, um, approaches from Dr. Steve, myself and Dr. Luke. But yeah, I, I'm only like, I only see women. (laughs) Okay. And did you, uh, just before we get into the other stuff, did you, when did you bring the associate in? Did you bring him in when you got pregnant around that time? Um, right around the time when my son was a year, like a year and a half. Okay. So we had done the, you know, we took over the practice together. We built it up together to what mm-hmm. it was. And honestly, we just got incredibly lucky. He, he approached us and it was the perfect fit and we couldn't be happier. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I get asked a lot about kind of that process and, and when do you know, and all those kinds of things where, does there any tips you have for that? I, I mean, yeah, I do have a lot of tips mainly because we're actually about to start looking for another associate to okay. add to the team now. So my main tip is, um, this, so we got, we were really lucky because we did not have to search out for Dr. Luke. He came to us. His brother was a patient. He was graduating mm-hmm. from Palmer and he came to us at a time where we wanted an associate. We could see a need for one, but we, we just, it's such a growth moment. Yeah. Like, are we really ready for an associate? And, um, we had about a year before that started working with a, we call him our outsourced CFO. He is a, our, uh, I don't even know what his official term is, is he's a financial analyst. Okay. So he is in our community. Um, and we meet with him monthly and he tracks our budget and he tracks our cash flow and he, we set goals with him. He is not affiliated with chiropractic at all. He actually okay. typically works with restaurants and, um, small, like is, um, construction companies, oddly enough. Okay. Um, but we found him through BNI, which uh-huh. most chiropractors know of. And we started working with him initially just to get a clear vision of, or clear idea of what our cash flow was for our office. Okay. And, um, right at the time Dr. Luke came to us, we went to, went to his name's Nino, our CFO. Um, we went to Nino and said like, Hey, I had, this is a really great guy and we would love, he's still on the same page as, as us, but can we actually afford to bring on an associate? Um, and not only that, but bring on an associate in a way that feels like 
true and good to our values. Uh And, um, he crunched the numbers and set out like the, the one year plan, the three year plan as to how that would look with our numbers. And he said, yeah, you guys can do it. You'll just have to, you know, you have to get really focused and really hit these goals, but you can do it. And so we did it and it has been so worth it. That is, that's awesome. That's good to hear that you didn't wing it. You, you sought some extra help and, and really knew what you needed to do to do it and do it well. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so this time around is going to be different because we actually need to seek out and find the right person. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, the universe has not delivered us another perfect <laughs> yet, but, um, but yeah, so I, if there are any students or anyone listening like that and they end up following me, they will see in probably the next few weeks, we're going to start posting about really what we're looking for. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I originally asked you on the show because I saw a post in a Facebook group about a community course that you've created. And I really wanted to dig into that because I love that you had the idea for the course and you ran with it and then you've eventually saw success with it. So can you tell me what sparked the whole idea for the course and tell me about the course? Yeah. I love talking about this class because it has, um, it has nurtured me just as much as it has nurtured my community and grown our practice. Um, so the class is called mama core and it was created out of my own frustrations with, um, the lack of postpartum support. So, right after I had my son, obviously I was in it myself and I felt isolated. I felt lonely as a first time mom for my personal situation. I was our, our social group. I was like one of the only moms. So at the time, like we were just friends with a bunch of young professionals and they weren't mothers themselves. And having that experience made me like feel even more isolated. And so there was the a lot of growth in that moment for me personally that I had to go through myself. But when I came out of it, um, about, I don't know, maybe like six months later, I, out of just like the, the identity shift that comes with becoming a new mother, I was hit with this like inspiration to do something about it and do something in my own way. And, I remember it all started with one Facebook post on my personal Facebook page. And I said, are there any women that want to get together? Um, I, I should also add, I'm a certified yoga teacher. So yoga has been in my background since, uh, since I started chiropractic school. Okay. And I had started incorporating a lot of yoga into my postpartum rehab and incorporating a lot of the DNS practices, um, and kind of blending this yoga and DNS and then some, um, just other arms of like the rehab protocols and physical therapy. I had been pulling all these strings myself to just help to come to a space of balance in my own body. And honestly, also my own like mental health. And I had been talking about it with patients and I'd been talking about it with friends of mine that were in motherhood themselves. And so I made a Facebook post and I essentially said, is there anyone that would have interest in getting together once a week, we can move our bodies and we can talk about all the things. And that first week, um, at, uh, we are friends with a couple that owns a CrossFit gym in town and they let us use their space. And I don't even remember what I charged. It didn't matter. It just mattered that women were coming together. And I think we had right around like 10 women at first. And it just became a opportunity for us to step away from all of the responsibilities and the things that happen as moms of young children and it allowed us to come together. And so there was a ton of community built there, lots of conversations around motherhood and the early postpartum season. Then we incorporated movements and it has evolved a lot since that first meeting. It has evolved to what it is now. Um, I actually just finished um, my final semester for this year. And so it's a, I, 
I've created it to become a semester course. We've transitioned. We went from the CrossFit gym and then I got a lot of feedback that it was maybe too loud and too cold in the winter. <laughs> so then we moved to a smaller fitness studio and then I got feedback that it was too far away for most people and then um, got feedback there. And then I was approached by the owner of a yoga studio in town that is just phenomenal at building community. And they, they essentially offered to host the class to allow me to use their space. And they also have all the things that, I mean, as a mom and chiropractor myself, like they had the mind body signups, they had the marketing in place. So now I essentially just show up and, um, everything's there for us to just do the class and not have to worry about all the background um, work. So it's a semester class that is weekly and it's what I would call a blend between if anyone's familiar with like a sister's circle, a sister's circle and, um, and movement and a yoga class and Pilates. It's because I've been on this path now for a few years. Anytime I have an interest or a curiosity or like, how can I do this better? I'll go and take another, like a different class, read a different book. And then naturally that will force me to change the class I offer. So it's like an ever evolving baby. <laughs> Very neat. I bet you have people that begin as the new almost mother and then just keep coming and, and experiencing the changes and, and growing yeah. with it as well. It is. And what it started as was, um, for anyone in, um, whether they're prenatal, even we had preconception, prenatal, and then postpartum, and we were all coming together. And then even at that point, I just felt as if in our community, there are plenty of prenatal opportunities for women. And better than that, they're specifically prenatal. The yoga class, the studio that I teach out of now has specific prenatal classes. And that gave me the opportunity to really ask myself, how can I make this the most, you know, this hour and a half of all these women's time, how can I make this the most valuable? Mm -hmm. And um, knowing that that they, that the prenatal mom has already had that yoga class, um, carved out for themselves. It allowed me to say like, I, truthfully, my passion, my mission is postpartum and to support women in that journey. So mm -hmm. now what mama core is, is like specifically only for postpartum okay. women. And that may change, but as the chiropractor though, it's, it is so enjoyable because my day in the office, I'm mostly prenatal patients. So women come to me in their pregnancy and then mama core, um, is that opportunity for them to take ownership of their health and their, mm -hmm. their healing in the postpartum. And I also, from a practice standpoint, it helps to build that no like, and trust factor. You know, they're seeing yeah. that we, we are, are more than, than the chiropractic arm. So do you have more patients come to you and then join the class or more people join your class and then become patients or is it about definitely even? the, definitely the latter. So okay. more people will hear about the class, come to the class or just hear about the class and then become patients as a result. Okay. And do you market at all or, and what has worked best for you for growing it? Yeah. Marketing, I, I haven't figured out fully. So I'm definitely no guru there. So the yoga studio that I teach out of markets, all of their classes and they use social media marketing every now and then I'll go on Facebook and like see my class being marketed. And that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, and then from my standpoint, so what makes sense to me is to just tell people about this opportunity. So on my personal page, I will share whenever we announce a new semester coming up, I'll share that on the personal, on our practice page, on, I have like a professional page myself. And then on Instagram, I'll share it on my personal and the mama core page. And I just kind of do it that way. And okay. it does the job for our community. I don't really have great advice for how to go beyond that. I know that there's plenty of Facebook marketing experts that can explain how to pay for that marketing. And that may be the next step for us, but okay. right now it's working totally fine. 
It sounds like it's going well. Yeah. So are you still in the BNI group? No, I have. Yeah. As soon as my son was born, I thought I could do it. And I came back for one meeting and I'm like, okay, I can't, <laughs> this is not it. My husband, my husband is in the BNI group. Okay. Um, and I guess your original question was, do you practice similar? In my head we do, but he sees such a different patient population. He's a, just the general practice chiropractor and uh-huh. BNI really serves that very well. I have become so niche down and so specific that I'm not saying BNI is not a good fit for what I do, but I don't need BNI the way that I did when we first moved and took over the practice. Yeah. I think we did BNI when we first opened and I don't think we would have survived without it. So yeah. but we didn't continue it. It was pretty far from our practice. Mm-hmm. Um, we, were in, we were in a smaller town and the center of town was in the middle of the town. And so it was surrounded by bigger areas, but from our practice, it was people were coming from different areas. And so it just didn't, wasn't suiting us well, probably two years, but it really worked well for us. So did yeah. you, I'm just going off what you just said. Did you guys buy your practice? It was an existing practice. Yeah. So we went to Indianapolis and we're independent contractors. And um, my husband, let me take a way step back. My <laughs> husband is from a long line of chiropractors okay. and he has always known he's wanted to be a chiropractor well before I was even in anywhere close to being in the picture. His great grandfather was a chiropractor. His grandfather was a chiropractor. His uncle was a chiropractor and his grandfather started the practice in Kalamazoo, Michigan. His uncle took it over. And then um, his uncle was retiring. We were two years into practice in Indianapolis. His uncle was retiring and said, you know, Hey, would you consider moving to Kalamazoo, Michigan? (laughs) And the end of the day, it was absolutely the right decision. It was hard. It was hard to leave our community and what we had built as independent contractors, but we had built something. We had built community in Indy, but oh my gosh, uh, just to have the opportunity to move here and practice together was everything. I'm so glad we did it. That's awesome. I was, when you first said that you were independent contractors, I was kind of thinking that's a a weird choice for a short-term commitment. And usually we recommend that people become associates because they're not going to build up a practice and then leave it. But it makes sense now that you guys didn't know you would be moving. So... Totally. Totally. There. Yeah. So many lessons learned along the way. And now looking back, you know, I know that they all happened for a reason and and a big reason why we are so committed to having an associate agreement that is nourishing for all parties Uh involved is because of our past experience and, you know, knowing what, what worked for us, what we liked and what felt good and what didn't, we didn't like and what didn't feel good. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So do you have a single piece of advice for a new doc? Yeah. I'm not sure how typical this advice is because it is, yeah, it's not the standard advice, but my, from my experience, my advice is to just take whatever you're interested in. So whatever hobby or interest or whatever sparks that curiosity inside of you, even if it is not related to chiropractic, I recommend that you continue to explore that and dive into it. And you will be amazed. For me, it was yoga. I followed this thread of yoga and it just naturally like moved and found its way into my practice. And in, at the time within my first year, I just taught a yoga class in the waiting room of our lobby after hours and two women came and it was just the three of us and they were not even my ideal patients, but it just kept trying to bring in what I loved. And I, that's my recommendation. You will be amazed. Yeah. At how, if you just continue to grow that side of yourself, as you grow, your clientele will grow. Your no like, and trust factor will grow. You'll get really clear on who your ideal patient is. And then once you know who that ideal patient is, you will get to be able to market yourself directly to them and you'll be able to speak very clearly to them and you'll be inside their head. And then once you're inside their head, then you create things so perfectly for them. And then you create your practice to serve them. Just continue to explore that. 
I think that's great advice. My husband once came home from a sports CE seminar he went to and said, we've got to buy lasers and, you know, all this stuff for sporting things. And I said, okay, what are you going to talk to these patients about? <laughs> because he, is, he doesn't do anything sport-like. He never has in his whole life. So it and he's like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it, so easy to get distracted by the shiny object. I mean, we have done that. And really the thing that keeps keeps coming up for my husband, myself, our associate, is the more that we get clear on who it is that we want to serve and what their needs are, then we make every decision based off of that. Yeah, that's awesome. So what about for an experienced doc that's stuck? What would you recommend to them to spark some passion? Yeah. Well, I think I can only specifically talk to the women DCs and specifically the mom DCs. I just feel like I know them because I am them. (laughs) And my advice would be similar to that first one. Your time and energy are spread quite thin. And so taking the time, taking that limited amount of time and that limited amount of energy to really get clear on who it is that energizes you. When you're in the office, when you have that patient walk in, that gives you energy as opposed to like the energy vampires Mm -hmm. start to really notice who those people are, what their characteristics are, what demographic they are, their age range, what their interests are, like start to name them. And the advice that was given to me by a coach that has become just so near and dear to my heart, um, Can I mention her name on here? Sure. It could be helpful. Um, Dr. Danielle Eaton of Aligned Women. um, She she has been really helpful or was especially really helpful when I was just in like the mess of my early postpartum with my son and trying to figure out what my identity was, what I wanted practice wise and knowing that I couldn't be everything to everyone. Like I initially planned, I think (laughs) working with her allowed me to get really clear on who my ideal customer is. And, um, she, helped guide me through exercises to really help me. I, I literally made a list of who those women were. And then I, of that list, I listed out the things about them that really made them so energizing for me. And then I created, and this is more Marie Forleo coaching. Um, (laughs) but like Marie Forleo talks about like creating your ideal customer avatar Uh and that avatar, you give them a name and you like create them like in your head. And I created a name for this woman and I just really like, I just invented her in my head. But then everything I did from that point forward was to serve her. Her imaginary name is Hannah Kelly. (laughs) And (laughs) everything that I do to like Mama Core was created for Hannah Kelly. And um, anytime I want to share something in our office or on social media, it's, will this like be helpful for Hannah? And um, it's just gone from there. So that would be my advice to a current practicing chiropractor is don't feel like you have to be a chiropractor to everyone with the spine, really narrow in and, and take the time to get clear on who fills you with energy and then turn that energy to serving them. And then they will only attract they'll tell their friends and then they will only continue to attract more people like them to your office. Yeah. So I don't know if you've looked much into us, but we have a planner that we created for chiropractors that are graduating. And in oh, there... Yes. That planner. Yeah. I, was, I, check it out. I need a 2020 yeah. planner. <laughs> so we... So this... Is, I w- it's not perfect for you. <laughs> it's perfect. But we are going to create one that's for everyone. But so we have in there and we call it the IPA because we like beer but it's the ideal patient (laughs) avatar. So, but we couldn't agree more to you. And honestly, now that we're, you know, 10 plus years in practice, our website attracts our ideal patients. Everyone who calls, they are people that we love to serve. And so going into, to work is not work. It's, it's very enjoyable to us. So that's awesome. That's great advice. So do you have a favorite book that you recommend? I, I have a lot of books on my book, um, on the side of my, my bedside table, but right now I'm loving Marie Forleo's Everything is Figure Outable. That is one that I read when it first came out. Cause I just am naturally a big fan of hers, but I've actually 
dove back into it because of life and life will throw curveballs at you. And the reminder that everything is figure outable has been a mantra that really is serving me right now. And then the other book is um, Brene Brown's Dare to Lead. And that has been very helpful for helping me navigate just the natural tough conversations that may come up as you lead people, um, especially as a business owner, but even as you start to build a community and be, yeah, it's, it's a great book too. I've heard of both of those. I haven't read either of them, but you are in the Marie Forleo one, right? Oh my gosh, I am actually. And that was not a plug. <laughs> this, that is such a funny story. I had no idea that they, I submitted that story. It, essentially, I, I, my story is, in, is included in the appendix and okay. I am, I've done B-school training, which was really helpful when we took over the practice. I had to create our website and everything. So B-school was super helpful for that. Um, and I am on her mailing list and this, I, I don't want to spoil the story, but something happened in my life and I remembered a public talk Marie Forleo had done where she used the term, everything is figure outable. And in her talk, she talked about this airport situation that happened. And my story has to do with airplanes and flying. And, um, and so I got this email from her. She's like, I'm coming out. This is sent to her like millions of followers, by the way. Uh Um, I'm coming out with this book. It's called everything's figure outable. If you have a story that you can share where you use the mantra, everything's figure outable, will you share it? And on a whim, I just shared this story and then life goes on. And like a year later, I order the book and I open the book and I'm, I get to the appendix and I, see my story in there. They never told you it was going to be in there? <laughs> no. And part of me wonders so funny. if my daughter is a year old. And when the story, when the story I shared happened, that happened in the book, um, she was eight weeks old and I submitted it like probably right around that time as well. Um, so I wonder if maybe in like the postpartum haze of life and two kids and a practice, maybe they did reach out to me and I just totally missed it. <laughs> But it was your emotions were so raw. So that's why they chose it. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely raw. I think that's great because I, you know, when I, I've listened to her podcast about the book and I've heard her on other people's podcasts. And I think there's that mindset that you need when you're building a practice that you have to be resilient and you've got to push and push and push. And like, you were so lucky to have 10 people at your first go at that course, but oh, for sure. You know, but let so me add that, that have two or three. Exactly. Yeah. That was really my, my true first class was the class I taught in the waiting room of the practice. Yeah. In Indianapolis, and that was two women. So like it, yeah, you have to keep going. You, you do. I, I was looking back at our emails from when we started our practice and just seeing everything that all of the times I tried to reach out to people and build relationships and start things from, you know, from nothing, start groups, start Facebook groups, start spreading the fact that we were there. We didn't know anyone where we opened up. So it was easy to just want to get to know everyone and build relationships and and grow the practice that way. So I think having that figure outable and, and push to move is, is definitely necessary. Yeah. It's a great mantra and it just like kind of, it, it sticks in your head and it can keep you moving forward when things get hard and they will get hard Yeah, and then they get better. And then another hard thing pops up, but that's, it's okay. It just means you're growing. Yeah. And I think a lot of, I talk to a lot of new docs and I think they, there's this feeling like everything should be a hundred percent and it's mm. so not, <laughs> there's totally. so many things that you've just got to trip and, and fall over and, and figure out and especially with insurance and billing and Mm -hmm. reading and, and, but as long as you have the patients, the patient is your number one priority and, and giving them the care they need or getting them to the care they need. I think you're good. You just, you'll figure it all out. It's, yeah, everything is so totally. What's the best business advice you've received? That I have received. Anything about working together? Because we have a lot of companies. Yeah. That... Well, you know, I'm actually going to give this advice because I, I observed it 
And then I, I promised myself that I would do something differently. So, um, when my husband and I decided to take over the practice, we were working separately in different offices. Um, and we were really nervous, like what that would look like to go from being in separate offices to under the same roof and working together. And, um, we, at the time we didn't have children. So time, we had more time. I realized that that is limited for a lot of people, but, um, we actually started doing preventative marriage counseling. So we, when we moved to Kalamazoo, the first thing we did after getting the office set up was we found a marriage counselor and we went to her weekly and it, at first, and then it turned into monthly. And honestly, now we, it's probably quarterly at this point, but I, that's something I hope to improve improve upon, um, as we kind of get our bearings with baby number two, but, but yeah, when it comes to working together, that was the best thing we did for ourselves because truly it opened up communication. And the truth is, is during the days at the office, when we're both in there, we actually don't see each other because we're busy with other people, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. But it's the, it's creating clear boundaries at home as to when we can talk about things and then also practicing communication especially when we were brand new in practice and many chiropractors, we got engaged in chiropractic school, married directly after chiropractic school, after we graduated and then thrown into the real world. So we were trying to navigate being a married couple and have the pressures of student loans and business loans and all those things. And, um, having someone help teach us and strengthen our communication abilities was so valuable. You guys are awesome at reaching out for help. Like you guys, somebody who's helping you financially, somebody who helps you, you know, work together. And I think that's great. I think you can cut down on so much friction. Yeah. Well, I, I have noticed that when I tell people about the, both Nino, the CFO and our marriage counseling, um, especially friends of ours in the profession, they have the same response. I would just challenge them to think of it as healthcare. We as chiropractors are pro, we preach proactive, we preach yeah. preventative, we preach holistic. And if we want to, it's practicing what you preach, you know, and yeah. I know it's not easy and I know it's an investment, but we ask our patients to invest in their health. Mm-hmm. And that is like many things, there's an energy. So uh, there's an energy to you saying, I'm going to invest in the health of our business. I'm going to invest in the health of our marriage and hopefully invest in my health also by, you know, doing movement practices that serve you. So it's all of those things, but it, it is just getting, that was definitely not my own thought. There have been so many people in my life that I have just observed who have lived in great integrity with their values. And those are always the most successful people. So naturally my husband and I saw that and we hope to be successful. Um, and so that's where we implemented those choices. That's awesome. So what's the best way for people to connect with you? I think Instagram is probably the best way at this time. Um, they can find me on mama core method on Instagram. And then in that bio is also my personal Kate Antonetti handle. So either one of those is really good. If they follow me there, then they'll naturally start to see the links to Facebook, um, there's a Mama Corps on Facebook. We've got a great community, Mama Corps community on Facebook also. Awesome. And we'll have links at the end of our post. Awesome. Uh, so, well, thank you so much for being on. I totally appreciate it and look forward to sharing your message and all of your awesome advice. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was a great opportunity. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, please share it with your friends on Instagram and Facebook. And for those of you who are already subscribers, we really appreciate it. Thanks for the reviews. We love reading those and knowing that you're loving the podcast. If you're looking for more tips and inspiration, be sure to check us out at lifestylepracticebuilders.com or join our business and marketing Facebook group for chiropractors at facebook.com slash group slash lifestyle practice.